Hey, Ben, I remember a few months back when my kid came to me, who is a pitcher. He's 10 years old, and he came to me saying that he was starting to have discomfort in his elbow, a.k.a. growth plate. And that's when I hit up my buddy, the creator of the kinetic arm. And I brought my son in there, and he gave my son the K2, the youth version. The kinetic arm sleeve is the first and only athletic sleeve designed to stabilize the shoulder and the elbow while throwing and swinging. So I can see how that was both preventative for him, took a little pain away, and then also helped him heal and recover. And it helps their mechanics. His form's better. The kinetic arm, I mean, there's really nothing like it. It goes beyond compression, and it's actually proven to reduce arm stress. It is the only movement arm brace that functionally stabilizes the arm while in motion. And that's really where you get the damage is by repetitively doing the same thing over and over again. I don't know how it works exactly, but I do know it works. So check it out. You can go to thekineticarm.com, use promo code MANFUSED, M-A-N-F-U-Z-E-D. You'll get 10% off that way. Or you can get the link in our episode descriptions on the podcast. Hey, what's up? It's the Man Fuse Podcast. We are back. I'm Kay Lee, audio producer, host, voice artist, my real estate co-host, Ben H., riding with me as usual. Today on the Man Fuse Podcast, our listener, Doug, a.k.a. Charlie Brown, is back to prove that there isn't a difference in the generations when it comes to the definition of friends with benefits. We talked about this in a previous episode. Well, he's put it to the test. Also, we're going to dive into this article that I found, which says we have more to fear from stupid people than evil ones. We're going to talk about the theory of stupidity. But first, so Ben, of course you remember Doug, a.k.a. Charlie Brown has a very unique lifestyle. His girl's got a girlfriend. Polyamorous situation. We have spoken about him many times now. Well, Doug took our last opinion about his friends with benefits, and to reset it, Doug was feeling that the different generations were viewing the definition of friends with benefits differently. Where Ben, you and I, and Doug are around the same ballpark in age. If you asked me what friends with benefits was, it's a friend, a girl, or a guy, I mean, whatever, but for me, girls, we're hanging out and we're probably sleeping together. That's the benefit, having sex, but there's no, you're my girlfriend, there's no, I'm going to be faithful to you, you don't have to be faithful to me. We are just enjoying company and enjoying the physical activity of banging each other, viciously. (laughs) Fervently. Yeah, fast and hard. But what the problem he ran into, and I believe he was going a generation a little bit younger than him, that... Girls in her 20s, I think. Yeah, in her 20s, that after experiencing what his version of benefits was, she wanted some type of monetary... Yeah, she wanted money. She wanted money afterwards. (laughs) (laughs) Which left Doug perplexed. He was perplexed because he felt as if it was a generational gap, and we got into that. And we spoke about it, and then you also brought up the fact that maybe Doug, with his 40-year-old back just wasn't breaking her off well yeah so she didn't supply and demand she wasn't getting the benefits part to her level of satisfaction yeah that, she's that, like, that, look if i'm gonna be here i'm gonna have to get monetary compensation she wanted some loot which begged the question how much loot yeah. are we talking about a 20 dollar like yeah, meal or, bucks. yeah i'm gonna give you 20 bucks so you can go get some dairy go get queen happy meal, go know? to dq yeah. on the way home right. maybe hit culver's right. if you really want to go all out a friend in need is a friend indeed that's right take her to the neighborhood applebee's right. maybe drop a 50 spot now that's not unreasonable no that's a friend that's not unreasonable but so doug took what we said and i think he had and only doug knows what he was doing in the bedroom as far as was he giving her the 40 year old back or was he breaking her off something right and so doug came back to us with this response Hey, you fuckuses, you racist bastards. Just joking. I was ablibing, which Doug did call us racist because he is, in fact, black. And we called him Charlie Brown. Ben coined him as Charlie Brown, not knowing he was black. And Doug responded, is it because I'm black? Anyway, besides that, we love Doug. Doug loves us. Here we go, gentlemen. 
Hope you guys are well. I have two things today. An update on this dating mess. Shaking my head. And advice for starting a pod on polyamory. He's got an update on this dating mess. So, so what's his update? I mean, he, I'm about yeah, to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's thinking he's getting used. So I took one of these little young chicks on a friends with benefits scenario. This is one of the chicks that wanted money for physical fun. Right. 26 years old, thinking she was the greatest thing in bed. My intent was to lay down the schlong so good that she didn't want the money. So this was <laughs> something that turned into a, a challenge for, uh, for Doug. The final countdown. He was going to show that his back was not 40 years yeah. old. I'm proud to say my goal was met. I was prepared to give her $150 wow. for some adult playtime. Wow. And so after an evening in, we did the do. Wow. I made sure my performance was on point. I think you guys can appreciate major details. I wonder if you ate a bunch <laughs> of Her legs were shaking yeah. uncontrollably. Oh she cried tears of ecstasy. <laughs> and when she stood up, she nearly fell. Yes. <laughs> Go, Doug. Go, Doug. Right? She told me that that was the best experience that she had ever had. Wow. A few days later, I noticed some red flags that weren't there before. Or maybe they were and I ignored them. I don't know. I have since tried to cut ties without blocking her, but she keeps trying to wiggle her way back in. I bet she does. She doesn't want to take no for an answer. Wow. That's all. Peace and love. He converted her. Yeah, Doug. Yeah. You knocked it out the park and she didn't want the money. No. So, there you go. Not anymore. So the benefits, it turns out, translated well into that younger generation as long as you're leaving her fulfilled. This is how it is, right? I mean, at the end of the day, he proved himself to be, as it pertains to getting some, in the elite category. And He's a sexual god. She may not have realized that from his past performance, but he ensured she could either have the money or not. And the truth is, at this point in time, he kind of won both sides of that thing. And I have he a didn't give her the money, and now she's jonesing for that and can't get it anywhere else so as you know why supply and demand he has made himself in high demand and very valuable very valuable she should be paying you she realizes there's no supply oh well there's an idea isn't it you know what i have one question for you wonder doug. what that experience would be worth to her doug did you eat the blue chew <laughs> <laughs> if Wanna you give it a boo boo, <laughs> eat a blue chip. Doug, Doug gave her her vagine a boo boo <laughs> after eating the blue chew. <laughs> That's right, dude. That's right. And if you want more info, if you want to beat it up like Doug, That's right. go to bluechew.com. Dude, Doug should be the poster boy for blue chew. He is. Yeah. Doug ate a mint blue chew. He ate a mint blue chew. <laughs> and gave her uh, and gave her a boo boo. <laughs> I mean, this girl <laughs> This girl was riding on a unicorn. Oh, uh, what a great tie-in that was, Ben. I will be sending that to Blue Chew. He was able to go for hours and hours yeah. after eating that it Blue Chew. on and on. She was like, please stop. Oh, no wow. more. That's hilarious. Tapping out. Tapped. Good for you, Doug. You need to check out Blue Chews. Seriously. Yeah. You can get a discount. Get your first month free at <laughs> manfuse.com. Right, Ben? Yeah, dude. I mean, Blue Chew is one of our... Are they a sponsor? Or... They're an advertiser. Okay. They're not a like a founder sponsor like kinetic arm but they are advertising yeah. and this will go off thing bert had a good idea for me today too he was like uh you guys case studies are the way to go he was like somehow get a blue chew you guys both should all get them because they'll send them to us for yeah. free so we have them Where we get they? something as almost as the same chewable thing and it be given to one of us and one of us not know which one is the blue chew so during the recording of the podcast it's revealed who ate the blue chew? That's right. <laughs> I said, what if we did the uh, the cold baths? One of us ate the blue chew. Yeah. We don't know which one ate the blue chew. And then while we're in the cold bath and we're recording the podcast, one of us has a massive erection that will not go away that'd be funny it would be funny well i think case studies are good and you know i think blue chew is something that is going to be huge they need to send us some and i forgot to tell you that we need to go on because you have to get it approved you have to do like one of those telecalls with one of the doctors it takes 10 minutes they'll write you the script and they'll waive our shipping so we'll get our first month's worth for free each wow ben i think this next piece i wanted to end this week's batch of episodes with this very all-encompassing perspective 
of what we've been talking about, what we talked about in the beginning about not believing the narrative, how fucked up of everything is going on right now. And it's called Bonhoeffer's, I don't know if I'm butchering that, it's an article, Theory of Stupidity. We have more to fear from stupid people than we do the evil ones. See, he compares it to, there's an internet adage that goes, debating an idiot is like trying to play chess with a pigeon. It knocks the pieces over, shits on the board, and flies back to its flock to claim victory. Basically, most of the time, we laugh off our engagement with a stupid person. We laugh it off. Stupidity can be pretty funny most of the time. Right. When a friend you know, says something completely out of left field that's just stupid, you giggle about it. Absolutely. And ignorance is part of a lot of us in everyday life. Definitely. You know, I mean, we're all ignorant to something. And so what this says is stupidity, though, has a very dark side. So in comic books, we know who the villain is. They wear the dark clothes. They kill yeah. people. You know, you could probably point to a million Putin. He is a villain. He's evil. Most people would agree that he would be considered yes. an evil person. Yes. You know, acts of evil. They're easy to identify. You can yes. identify the evil. Stupidity, though, is a bit of a different problem altogether. Yes. You can't easily fight stupidity for two reasons. First, we are collectively much more tolerant of stupidity than we are evil. Indeed. If you see something that's evil, we attack it. Sometimes by force, sometimes by grouping together and fighting off that narrative, right. yada, yada, yada. But unlike evil, stupidity is not a vice most of us take seriously. We don't lambast others for ignorance, and we don't scream down to people for not knowing things. Second, the stupid person is a slippery opponent. They will not be beaten by a debate or open up to reason. What's more, when the stupid person has their back against the wall and cannot refute any of the facts, they snap, they lash out. It's basically talking to a wall. It then goes on to say, with great power comes great stupidity. Stupidity, like evil, is no threat as long as it doesn't have power. And we laugh at the things that are harmless, such as your friend's ignorance or whatever like that. But stupidity, though often goes hand in hand with power. And if you look closely, it becomes apparent that every strong upsurge of power in the public speaker or sphere, be it political or religious, infects a large part of humankind with stupidity. And it works in two ways. The first is that stupidity does not disbar you from holding office or authority. We all fucking know that, right? History, politics are swimming with examples of what happens when stupid has risen to the top. Second, the nature of power requires that people surrender certain faculties necessary for intelligent thought. Meaning, faculties like independence, critical thinking, and reflection. The argument is the more someone becomes part of the establishment, the less of an individual they become. Charismatic. Exciting outsiders, bursting with intelligence and sensible policies, become imbecilic the moment they take office. It's yeah. as if slogans, catchwords, and the like have taken possession of that person. He's under a spell. He's blinded, misused, and abused in his very being. Power turns people into robots. Intelligent, critical thinkers now have a script to read. They'll engage their smiles rather than their brains. And when people join a political party, it seems like most choose to follow suit rather than things through. Power drains the intelligence from a person, leaving them akin to an animated mannequin. Evil people find it hard to take power. They need stupid people to do their work. Like yeah. sheep in a field. Exactly. A stupid person can be guided, steered, manipulated, to do any number of things. Yes. Evil is a puppet master and it loves nothing as much as the mindless puppets who enable it. They are the general public or inside the corridors of power. That's exactly right. I thought that was pretty fucking powerful. It's not my words, so yeah. you can't give me the kudos for writing all that beautiful. I think it alludes to a lot of the things that we talk about where the level of stupidity that we see is a front for evil. We can see evil, we can notice it, and we can reject it. Stupidity we can accept. It was stupid 
that the train went off the tracks. It was stupid that they decided to explode those things. But what if it wasn't stupid and what if it was intentional? Well, the That e- would be evil masked as stupidity. Well, the evil could be the one at the top exactly. pulling the strings that's for what the I'm stupid saying. idiots. And below. that's what I'm saying. I see evil in this world. The puppets were blowing shit up. The puppet master was the evil one making that's it right. happen. Sometimes we can see evil most of the time. Sometimes, I mean, it's that evil person is shrouded by other idiots all around him and you don't know which idiot it was who's the mastermind behind that's right because sometimes evil is masked as stupidity intentionally and it brings up a great point and i was thinking about this as i was in my cold water immersion meditation today we need to do a cold we need to find a place to do one of those cold water baths on the podcast my backyard dude no but we need two like metal like cold Thingies. Yeah, okay. I think so. All right. When you sit down in it. Oh, I see what you're saying. It's like next to each other. Well, you can really, you really only want to be in there for like five minutes. Really? You don't want to be in for much longer than five minutes. Today I was in for 11 minutes and didn't even realize it. I mean, I guess we could do it in your pool. Yeah, because I got the hot tub. So I run the hot tub. I get in the hot tub, hang out until I get nice and cozy. And then I go and I set my timer on my phone and I go and I get in the pool. I need to figure out what gear we would need to have. I guess we just have to be close to an edge and not get it wet. We could set up a little thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, we can do it. For sure. All right. So I was in my meditation and I was just thinking about a lot of different things. And something came to me. And I think that it is a powerful mantra that I've used in my life and that I continue to use. And it's act as if and expect the results of that you know like a lot of people out there are still coming short on their new year's resolutions right now a lot of people out there are kind of holding themselves back from doing something that they may want to do or whatever right what i'm saying is how are you acting the way that you act determines the results that you get you see what i'm saying oh my god 100 So act as if, look at that resolution, look at that goal, act as if it is already true. Act as if. I have really been struggling to define this quantum leap that I am making. And the one thing that I keep coming back to is that I have to act as if I'm already there. And that's very difficult to do. You know what I mean? I have to act as if these things already exist. Absolutely. Because you have to see beyond the current reality of where you are. You have to embody of who you're going to be and, you know, where you're going. You just have to be that person. Yeah, you got to be it. You know what I mean? You got to be that leader. You have to be whoever that is. Be that father. Be that mother. Be that whatever it is. Be that in shape person. Be that, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Be that business person. Be that drug-free guy. Be yeah, that whatever I mean, it is. I mean, you can sit there and think about it and talk about it. And don't be that stuff. white tight pants wearing motherfucker yeah. at the club <laughs> snatching little <laughs> selfie lights out of people's hands. Don't but, be him. But you know, I know the human condition involves a lot of suffering, and we are made to suffer. We all go through different trials and tribulations in our lives, and levels of suffering, and levels of suffering, and somehow, like for me. When I just go out and start talking to people, it makes me feel better. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're people, people. But that's part of who I am. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's part of that vision. Part of that vision is taught. Like we're talking through, it always makes me feel better to come here and cut a podcast. It's therapeutic. Because I know I'm talking to people. You know what I'm saying? And you're talking to me. Right. Absolutely. (laughs) And so anyway, that's my manifestation moment for this episode is... Act as if. Thank you for listening to the Manfuse podcast. Find us on all the podcast platforms, wherever you get your podcasts. And also hit us up. You can join the show by texting or leaving a message, 770-744-5227. You should see the Manfused hoodie I am wearing right now. It is glorious. It's the heavy-duty version, manfused.com. We have the links to all of our products. And hit us up at manfused.com. Peace out. It's very nice. Ciao for now. Ciao for now.